everyone biscuit again, and I can no longer afford rent. Seriously, I have no clue how to start this video. This is about my third or fourth time recording an intro for this thing. I don't know how to open this. I considered an unfunny joke, I considered just getting right into who the Gundam Ariel is and what the show is about, or I'll just take the third option and say there's a model kit in front of me. Visually, this kit is really good and an awesome representation of the Gundam Ariel. Of course, this is the high grade and actually the first ever iteration of the Gundam Ariel in a model kit. It looks really nice, there's some really clever engineering behind it, but that doesn't stop it from some inevitable Bandai specific issues. For starters, we get a sticker sheet that's just about as big as the unit itself. For whatever reason, I do not know why, this thing just has a lot of color and accuracy on places that it almost doesn't even really need it. Uh, coming up to the shoulders, this is really where the main color and accuracy really drives me crazy. It's not super bad. You get an option of either having them active with the rest of the shell units, or just covering them in black. They'd be super easy to paint, but I'm lazy. One thing, however, that's really interesting is that we get eye stickers, first of all, they're individual, and head camera stickers. Now, you don't need them for the Gundam Ariel because they actually come fully co color separated, including the back camera. So that's really cool, and no need for stickers at all. Same with the shell unit in the head. I did use the sticker just so it caught the light a little bit better, but that actually comes through from the red part right there. There's some really cool color separation. I don't know why the sticker sheet had to be as big as it is. Fortunately though, the really bad color correcting stickers are actually used only for the accessories. You get two white ones right here on the top of this uh, particular segment on the shield, as well as this blue one. But you probably wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't tell you. As well as the sight on the rifle, but this actually has a really cool added detail. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up, but there's actually some kind of crosshatch gradient on there, which is super cool and definitely a really cool use of stickers if they had to include that. That I really like. When it's all said and done, the aerial out of the box looks very nice and very spot on to the animation. I'm pretty sure this, uh, the Gundam aerial anyway, was designed with model kits in mind, so that definitely helps it out a lot here. You get beautiful color separation, especially with these yellow on the back of the uh, thighs and backpack. You get uh, molded in shell units, so these aren't stickers. These actually come like this on the runner. You get two of them, and you actually get a couple of different parts. We'll talk about those a little more later. As well as some very neat um, alternate-sided stickers. So what you're seeing in there, first of all, very nice smoky clear uh, gray right there. But that is actually the sticky side of the sticker. Here's a better look of the smoky gray piece, and as you can see, when attaching the sticker, you stick it on the sticky side this way, and all that detail comes through right there, so you don't have to stick it onto the front of any part, which is very cool. Um, I don't really see too much of a practical use for this. I can't really judge if this is more shiny than normal, but that's definitely a unique way of uh, doing that, and I really hope we get to see that more with other kits in the future. Other than that before mentioned sticker sheet, you get a lot of accessories with this kit. First of all, the hands. You get a pair of closed fists, and you also get a pair of nicely sculpted widespread open hands. Just kidding, you actually need to buy a separate option set. Yeah, not a chance. Next up then, you got a pair of very nice blue beam sabers. Heresy, they should be in green. I don't know why they're not. Those plug into the hands just like so. And that doesn't look too bad. And when not in use, they can plug right here onto the backpack, like so. Next up then, we have her beam rifle, which has a very nice geometric shape to it. I love it. And that just goes into the hand, like so. And that looks pretty good. Now some of you eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed that I forgot to include an accessory in that overview, and that would be an adapter for the beam rifle. Funnily enough, I actually lost it, but if you end up getting this kit, It'll attach right into any one of these funny little holes in the side of the rifle, and it'll allow you to attach it into the backpack when it's not in use. And lastly for the rifle, you get this very cool included beam effect part. This just attaches in easy as... And ooh, I like the look of that!
Before we talk about the final accessory, let's take a short detour to talk about these two parts. So you actually get two sets of shell units for the chest. You have the already pre-molded ones right there, and you've got the ones that come on the smoky clear gray runner. And what I've gone ahead and done with these is actually attach on the black sticker that you get. You get two sets of stickers for um, all behind all the smoky clear pieces, and one of them is for the shell units being active, and the other is for them being deactive, which is what I put on right here. And here's a quick look with them deactivated. And last but definitely not least, we've got the shield. This shield is super detailed and has a bunch of layering parts that just gives it such an awesome look, especially around back with that really nice piece of gray plastic that isn't so nice, but we'll take a look at that later on. You get a three millimeter hole on either arm and the way this attaches is super simple, just like that. Again, this shield is super awesome, but this isn't my preferred mode for the shield. Those of you who know the design of Gundam Ariel, you'll know that the shield has another use that we will talk about right after. The movement at the head. She can look up that far and look down that far. Shoulders move out on a ball joint. Be careful because that might split open the chest a little bit, but they'll move out and in as well as give you uh, just a little bit out to the back, not a ton. It's mostly used for going forward though. Ball joint at the arm, which allows for full rotation. Shoulders can move up individually. Arms can raise up a ridiculous amount for how, uh, well, for how simple that joint is. Full rotation right here. You get a single jointed bend, could have been a little further. And of course, Hands are on ball joints. For having such a snatched waist, this thing actually has a ton of movement right here. You get a crunch, an arcing back, a full rotation right there, and even a bit of side to side. That's a little tight, be careful. Front skirts are on ball joints, molded together but can be separated. Side skirts are on a hinge joint, and no back skirt. The leg can kick up about that far before it'll start clashing, but if you move it out of the way just a little bit, you'll get a little more out to the front. And obviously, because of no butt skirt, you get a lot out to the back. But again, clashing parts. You get a pretty... Actually, yeah, you get the perfect splits. Awesome. And you get a pretty limited thigh rotation. That definitely could have been a little bit more. You get a double-jointed bend at the knee. You get a ridiculous amount of up and off. You get a ridiculous amount of up and down at the toe. Ankle guards are on a ball joint. The front part of the toe is on a ball joint, while this is on just a rotation. So you can get pretty much anything you want out of that, including up and a little bit of down. Posability on this thing is amazing. Actually, if it weren't for the limited thigh joints, I'd say this thing has perfect articulation. And now we can finally get into what more the shield will do. The first thing you want to do is disassemble the whole shield, get these two parts, and attach them onto the sides of the arms. Next up, these parts will attach right here into the shoulders. You'll want to take these three parts here, attach them together like so and this now becomes a back skirt for the Gundam Ariel. These two parts then are going to attach into the sides of the legs like so. And as for these two bits you get an option of either attaching them to fill up this hole back here or you can take the beam rifle and slide these segments on the top and on the bottom. And here we have what's called the bit on mode, which is really cool. I'm really digging the new added bulk on the arms and shoulders. It really balances out the proportions of this thing and just in general looks more like a robot and less like a oddly proportioned anime girl. I don't really know what else to call it. It looks pretty cool though. Closing thoughts for the high grade 1144th scale Gundam Ariel. It's pretty good. If you can get past all the color 
inaccuracies, despite how strange they are, it's a pretty solid kit. Uh, maybe not at the price point I got mine at, but if you can find it cheaper literally anywhere else, then I highly recommend getting it. Awesome to pose, a lot of really fun accessories. It's almost like two kits in one when you consider the bit on form. As always, my social media will be linked in the description below. I'm usually more active on those anyway. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name's Biscuit, and I'll see you guys in the next video.